Welcome to this series, Fighting for the True Gospel. I am very excited to share this word with you today, where we are going to look at the Holy Spirit in the early disciples. In this series on to now, we have looked at faith, what is true faith. We are, going to, we are looked at repentance, true repentance. We are looked at the baptism in water. Last time we looked at the baptism with the Holy Spirit, where we focus on the life of Jesus and what the Holy Spirit did in his life. And now we are going to look at the Holy Spirit in the early church, in the first apostles, in the first disciples. And I am excited for this teaching and I hope you are ready to be challenged because you are going to get challenged today. We are going to look at the Bible. We are going to just take the word. We are going to look at it as it is. And we are going to look at some fruit of being full of the Spirit. We are going to look at what accomplishes somebody who has the Holy Spirit. We are going to look at the boldness. We are going to look at the power. We are going to look at the fruit. We are going to look at the transformation that is happening when somebody receives the Holy Spirit. And we're going to look at it out of the Bible. This is what is happening with those people we read about in the Bible who receive the Holy Spirit. And we want to then be honest. If we then know somebody who don't have the same power, the same fruit, who don't have the same transformation, who don't have those things we see accomplish somebody in the Bible who have the Holy Spirit, we may ask ourselves, do they really have the Holy Spirit then? If they don't have what is accomplished, somebody, what is following somebody in the Bible who have the Holy Spirit, then let us just stop pretending and, and keep on to that. Yeah, but they have the Spirit. Why do they have the Spirit? Because, because... We say, we believe it, we, we read it in the Bible, and I've always thought it like that. But, but if, if what we see in the Bible is so totally different from what you see in your life or what you see in the church you attend, why keep holding on to that strong, that deception then, I would say, that you really have the Holy Spirit and they really have the Holy Spirit? If, if, if nothing is, is as we read in the Bible, then trust the Bible instead. Instead of trusting what you have grown up in. Instead of trusting what you have seen around you. So it's going to be a teaching that's going to challenge many of you. It's going to be simple, but it's going to be powerful. So I hope you are ready to get challenged. I hope you are ready to see what the Bible says, not our traditions. Not what we grew up in, not what you have believed unto today, but what do the word of God says about somebody who received the Holy Spirit? What do the Holy Spirit do in a person? And I am excited for that. If we look at last time, last time we, spoke, we looked at Jesus and the Holy Spirit in his life. We started in Matthew 3, how he got baptized by John and the Holy Spirit came over him how he was led by the Spirit. It was the first time we saw that phrase over oh, Jesus, led by the Spirit. But that is something that is following somebody who has the Holy Spirit. They are led by the Spirit. So Jesus was led by the Spirit out in the wilderness where he was tempted. In Luke 4, we read how he came out of the desert in the power of the Holy Spirit. And that is also something that is following and we are going to look at that today. So Jesus was led by the Spirit. He walked in the power of the Spirit. And then we read how he came to the synagogue and he read these famous words in Luke 4. Luke 4, 18, Jesus read these words. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the good time for the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to sip a liberty those who are bound. This was the word Jesus was reading. And we looked at that last time. As I said last time, we should be able to say the same words. If you have the Spirit in you, you should be able to say, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because He has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me 
to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind and to sit at liberty those who are bound. We should be able to say that because that is some of the things we saw is happening when the Spirit has come upon people. We have got the Holy Spirit to sit at liberty those who are bound, not to sit in church Sunday after Sunday. No, to sit people free. I'm not against sitting in church, but that is not the only thing we should do. So we looked at that last time and how Jesus said, it's the best for you that I go away because then I will send another helper. Not another of a different kind, but another of the same kind. And he will not leave us often. often he will come back to us by his spirit and the spirit is crying out, Abba, Father, and the love is in our heart and all of this. We looked at that last time, how Jesus died on a cross. Uh, he rose up again. He came to his disciple and in John 20 and blew on them and said, receive the spirit. But they could not yet receive. Why? Because he had not yet ascended to heaven. But he told them in the same time that they should wait in Jerusalem. And then he went to heaven and from heaven he blew again. As a mighty wind, the Holy Spirit came and filled them all. And we looked at that last time. And if you are not seeing the video, go and see it because we need a good foundation in our life. We need to know it from the beginning to the end. But that was last time. Now we are going to move on from what happened in Acts the book of Acts, and we are going to focus especially on the first eight chapters in the book of Acts, and you are going to see the life of the Holy Spirit in some of the first believers. I want to say to you again before, or say to you before we move on, if you believe, and you should believe, that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, then you also believe that the Holy Spirit is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And what we read in the Bible should continue today. It's not Jesus who have changed. It's not the Holy Spirit who have changed. We have changed. We have got many different kind of church denominations with many different beliefs today. All of them will say they have the Holy Spirit. But if they don't see the life and the fruit and the testimony of the Holy Spirit as we see in the Bible, I will question that they have the Holy Spirit. And you should also question that. And maybe you are questioning your own life uh, that you have the Holy Spirit after this teaching. But that is good. It's good to question it because then you can do something about it and get the Holy Spirit. And then you can see the fruit thereof. If we look at the book of Acts, I have the book of Acts here. I have, uh, uh, we have different translation. I use uh, eSort on my computer. So it's different translation I use. But this one, my, my reading one here is the New American Standard Bible. But I have, um, you can James, I have many different translations. I also use my Danish Bible. But if I look in this, it's called the book, the Acts is it called, of the Apostles. Some people just call it, the book of Acts, but the Acts of the Apostle, that is uh, the first book we read, where we read about the early church, uh, how the Holy Spirit came and how they were living this life, or the only historian book we have. The Acts of the Apostles. I want to say that this is not the Acts of all of the Apostles. There is many of the Apostles you don't read about. You don't read about Andrew, James, Philip, the Apostle Philip. Bartholomeus, Thomas, Matthäus. You don't read about them like that in the book of Acts. You read a little about Peter and John, but also then you read about Stephen. We are going to look at, we, you read about Philip, uh, not the Apostle Philip, but the other Philip. And you read about other people. And I want us to understand that when we read the book of Acts, it's not the book of the first apostles. It's actually... We should call it the Acts of the Holy Spirit instead. Or the book of the Holy Spirit. Because this is really not the Acts of the Apostles. This book is the Acts of the Holy Spirit. This book is showing what the Holy Spirit is doing in believers. If they are apostles or they are simple believers serving at the tables as we are going to look at, 
it's really not about us. It's about who we have in us. And that should be Christ in us. And what we read there, because the Holy Spirit, as I said, have not changed, what we read there should be the same today. And we start in the beginning of Acts chapter 1. We saw a little at the last time, but Jesus, he said here, he commanded them to stay in Jerusalem. And then he said here, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witness in Jerusalem, in all of Judea, in Samaria, and to the end of the age. After he said that, he was taken up before the very eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight. And, and this is, we read here in Acts, but it's actually in the same time and context as what we read before in John 20, 20 and John 22. Because there he, we read how he was taken up to heaven short after that. So here Jesus, he said that you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon you. Power to what? What are we talking about? Power to become rich, power to start companies, business, power to give out DVDs, power to make movies, power to, to be the best football player in the world, power to be a fast runner. What power is he talking about? Power to be my witness. That is what he's saying. Jesus said, when the Holy Spirit come upon you, he said to his disciples, but we know it's for all of us today. It's the same spirit. When the Holy Spirit come upon somebody, they will receive power to become his witness. And it's interesting because when you read the word witness, the strong concordance from this word is G3144. And the strong concordance is Martyr, martos or martyr. That is somebody who lay down their life for Christ. Somebody who is getting killed because of Christ. That is a martyr. And this is what Jesus is saying. When you receive the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit come upon you, you shall receive power to become my martyr. That is the word he's using. And, and we see the same word being used in Acts 22 when Paul, he was talking about Stephen. He said, and when the blood of thy martyr Stephen was slid, when the blood of the martyr Stephen was slid, it's the same word that's being used here, but here is translated with martyr. The same word is being used in Revelation 17, where it talked of uh, verse 6, And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saint and with the blood of the martyr of Jesus. It's the same word. It could be witness here. But in the context, it would be a bit re easier, you know, more sane to translate it as martyr. But I believe this was how it should have been translated also in Acts 1.8. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon you and you will be my martyr. Because what do we see? We see exactly that. We see exactly that. The early church was a martyr church. Over 90%, if we look at it like that. If you look at Jesus, had 12 apostles. We have Judas who portrayed Jesus, but if we just say 12, there was one out of those 12 who did not become a martyr. And there was John. John was the only one who did not become a martyr. So one out of 12, Jesus have a martyr percent over 90. The early church was a martyr church. That was the gospel he was preaching. Any, anyone want to follow me, he need to deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. They knew what the cross meant. So it was a martyr percent, a martyr church. But they were not alone in it. He sent them a helper. He gave them power to become martyr. Power by the Holy Spirit. 
And this is what we see. And, uh, and, and he said, you should receive power to become my martyr or my witness. Also use that word in Jerusalem, in Judea and Samaria and to the end of the age. And book of Acts is that story. You see it start in Jerusalem and then you see it in all Judea and Samaria. And now we are continued to the end of the world. world. It is continuing today. But if you just take this word, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon you and you shall be my martyr. The early disciples was a very, very bold group of people. They were not afraid to testify about Jesus. They were not afraid to be a witness. They were not afraid to lay down their life as a martyr for Christ. Why? Because they had the Holy Spirit in them. But what we are going to look at and, and be challenged with, but if we didn't have people today who's afraid to say Jesus to somebody at the workplace, if they're afraid to say that they're Christian to the students on school, if they're afraid to confess to their neighbor that they believe in Christ, do they really have the Holy Spirit in them then? I will uh, sit a big question mark with that and say there is a big, big chance that those people don't have the Holy Spirit. And it's going to be even more clear when you see it because next time I'm going to talk about how you receive the Holy Spirit. We are going to talk about a little about how you continue being full of the Spirit. We're also going to look at tongues. And tongues is, is a, a big thing, but... To receive the Holy Spirit is so much more than speaking tongues. That is a sign we're going to look at next time. But there is so much more. And if you look at Peter, Peter is the first example we are going to look at that transformation from a Peter without the Holy Spirit to a Peter with the Holy Spirit. Peter, when, he received, when the Holy Spirit came upon him and the rest of the apostles in Acts 2, we can read that there was a big multitude of people and Peter in Acts 2, 14, we read this. Then Peter stood up with the eleven. It was not only Peter, there was the eleven. Raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen careful to what I say. Here we saw Peter with boldness he did not stand up like um, um excuse me I, I want to explain what is happening here because they all came together because they heard a big noise and and all of the things and we're going to look at that next time and they came together and like what is happening here are they drunk what is happening they did not understand it and peter stood up and he addressed the crowd with boldness but remember, this was the same Peter who short time before denied Jesus three times. The same Peter. And we're going to look at this because Jesus in Mark 14 foretold how Peter was going to deny Jesus. And he actually said that they will all fall away and they will, as the Bible was saying. And then, but then Peter, Peter, he said, no, 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 no. Even if all fall away, even if they will fall away, I will not. No, no, Peter, you, Jesus, you can count on me. If the other will deny you, I will not. And then we read here, Mark 14, 30. Truly I tell you, answered Jesus, today, yes, tonight before rooster crows thrice, you have this night me three times. He said it so clear. But Peter keeps saying, keeps saying, no, no, no. Even if I have to die for you, I will never deny you. And all the others keep saying the same. So it's not only Peter, it was all the others. So here Jesus said, you're going to deny me. Peter said, no, no, I, I, I will never deny you. Peter said, Jesus said again, yes, you are going to deny me. Three times before the ro rooster have crowed two times. And Peter continued, no, 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 no. Even if I will die with you, I will never deny you. And it happened. Before the day was over, he had denied Jesus three times. He even cursed when a young servant girl in the end said, hey, 
you you are you you're one of them a young girl he was afraid and he denied jesus peter had the right heart he had the right confession but it was not just more than a confession but after the book of either after the holy spirit came we saw a totally different peter and we can see that in Acts 2. And in Acts 3, we read how Peter and John, they uh, healed the lame man and raised him up. And it was, again, powerful. He came and asked for money and silver and gold. Peter said, silver, gold, we do not have, but what we have, we give to you. In the name of Jesus, rise up. So what did they have? They have the power of the Holy Spirit. So they raised that man up. Then they went in. And Peter, he, uh, w w uh, a lot of people were scattered around, and then Peter, Peter started to preach again. And he preached with boldness. And we can read that in chapter 3. Chapter 4, you can read how the priest and the temple guards, they came and they seized Peter and John, and they put them in jail to the next day. And then we go in here in chapter 4. The next day, we read here, the next day the rulers and the elders and the teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. And as the high priest was there, and so was Caiaphas. And it's important to notice those names. Because that was the same names that was involved in Jesus being crucified. Jesus was brought to the house there with Annas and Caiaphas, and they were there when Jesus was crucified. That was the same people who was behind Jesus' crucifixion. They were there together with John, Alessandro, and some of the other in the high priest family. Then they had Peter and John brought before them and began to christen them and said, By what power and what name did you do this? Now we have Jesus, Peter, with John in this place here. Being asked this question, by what name, by what power and what name did you do this? Raise that man up who was lame, preach that gospel. And we see a Peter who was totally transformed. It was not a Peter who was denying Christ anymore. Last time it was just a servant girl who got him to deny Christ. This time it's not a servant girl. It's, a, it's the high priest. It is those who got Jesus crucified, those who have the power to make Peter a martyr. Those people ask him, and then we read here, Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for the act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and being asked who, how he was healed, then know this. You and all the people in Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth whom you crucified but whom God raised from the dead, this man stand before you healed. Hallelujah. What a boldness. The man you crucified. He was not an excuse, Peter. He was not denying Christ. He was proclaiming the word will with boldness. He was a true witness for Christ and was not afraid to become a martyr for Christ. What was the difference in Peter's life? The word we read here. Then Peter filled with the Holy Spirit said. Peter could never have done this without the Holy Spirit. But this is what happens when the Holy Spirit comes into a person. F 53 days before Jesus, Peter had the confession. Jesus, I will never deny you. But he denied him before the day was over. As soon as it started to burn under his feet, 
as soon as I started to cause something, he was the first one to deny Jesus. 53 days before. He denied Jesus. Jesus got buried, rose up the third day. He appeared for his disciples over 40 days and then he went to heaven. And 10 days later, we had Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came. But it's not about if it was 50 or 53 days. It's not about the days. The days don't make a difference. That could have gone thousand days and we would have the same Peter. It's not about days. It's about the Holy Spirit. It's about the Holy Spirit. Christ in him. Dead man walking alive by the Spirit. If we look at those two Peters, the Peter before the Holy Spirit, who have the right confession, but as soon as they start to burn, he was first one to deny Jesus. Or the Peter after the Holy Spirit, which one are you? Which one are the church you are attending? I know when we left Denmark persecution, uh, we did not leave Denmark just because of persecution. We left Denmark because Jesus also said, if they persecute you in one city, take the dust off your hand and feet and move to another city. If Jesus had said, stay there, even it will cost jail and terrible thing, we lose our kids and all of this, of course, he would give me strength to stay there, but he said, go. But in that time of persecution, I went to in Denmark. If you don't know my story, you can, you can see some videos about it on my channel. But in the time of persecution that made us leave Denmark, I saw many people around us who just gave up one by one. When it starts to burn, when it starts to become hard, they're like, no, 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 I don't know this guy. No, 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 I, I'm not there. No, 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 no. I'm afraid when persecution really come upon the church in America and all over the world, we will really see the true image of where people are in their faith. And I'm afraid that most people will look like the Peter before the Holy Spirit rather than the Peter after the Holy Spirit. Why? Because there is so much deception when it comes to the Holy Spirit. And, and, and we are going to continue to look at it. But here we saw with Peter, we saw a transformation happen in his life. And we read in, in, um, in uh, Acts 4, we can continue reading how um, he continued preaching. And then we read here that when they, when the leaders there, when they was 13, when they saw the courage or the boldness of Peter and John, and realized that they were unschooled or uneducated, ordinary men. They were astonished. And they took notes that these men have been with Jesus. But since they could see the man who had been healed standing with them, there was nothing they could say. If we look at those two verses, they recognized, they saw the boldness, the courage that was in Peter and John. And what they noticed right away was that those people who have that boldness, who spoke with that wisdom, who saw, where they saw the, uh, who walked in that power, who have the, the lame, on, lame man standing beside them, the first thing they noticed was that they were unschooled. They were uneducated men. They were ordinary men. And they were astonished. They were, they were amazed. They did not know what to do. But they recognized they had been with Jesus. Or even more, I think they saw Jesus in them. And that was why they did not know what to say. They have just some days before 50 days before crucified jesus and now 50 days later they see somebody who was uneducated ordinary man but they recognize jesus in them and there was nothing they could say those religious leaders had nothing to say 
Why? Because those uneducated men, those ordinary men, were filled with the Holy Spirit. We need the power of God in our life. We need the Holy Spirit. We, we don't need more educated men. We don't need more seminary people, Josh. We need people filled of the Spirit. You can go on seminary, you can study theology without knowing God. And most people who come out of seminary, they, I guarantee you, they come out with a lot of head knowledge, but they don't come out filled of the Spirit. And this is what we need. And our church, we can do programs, we can do more nice ch church, beautiful worship and, and like a concert. But, and we get people into church by that, but it's only the Holy Spirit who can really come in and transform a person from inside and out. It's the Holy Spirit that makes the difference. I talked with my father-in-law a few days ago and he said he had just been in church where there was a, a young boy, I think, who was uh, taking charge of the smoke machine. They had a smoke machine that church he went. And he put so much smoke in that they could not see the worship leader. There was so much smoke in the church. And I said to him as a fireman, we see that when you see, burn, I, I had a kid in the case of fireman, when you see burn is, uh, wood is burning, when just as soon as the fire go off, the most smoke is coming. So why do they need a smoke machine in a church? Because the fire have gone out. If you have the Holy Spirit, it's not about all of those outwardly things, outward things. It's about the Spirit in you. And we see that. And it's, it is, it's not about education. It's not about studying theology. The, the early disciples transformed that world. It don't mean that they were not wise. They have a lot of wisdom. But wisdom came from the Holy Spirit and from the relationship they have with Christ. And we see that, and I really love these words here, because this is the same today. We need that. We need to be filled of the Holy Spirit. If we continue in Acts 4, we read here that they called them in again and commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, which is right in the eyes of God to listen to you or to listen to him? You be the judge. But as for us, we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. So they were forbidden to tell about Jesus, but they said, no, we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. What was that driving force inside of them? There was the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit in them. And it just looks so opposite of what we see in the churches today, where we almost need to force people to tell about Jesus. Hey, you need to tell about Jesus. You need to, please, try to open your mouth and say to your neighbor that you go in church. Come on, we need to come back to the truth. But they were forbidden to tell about Jesus and they went home and there was a prayer meeting. They met with some other believers and they prayed. And I love that prayer here, we read here, Acts 4, 29. And now, Lord, take notes of their threats. Grant you that your servant may speak your word with all confidence. While you extend your hand to heal, and signs and wonders take place through the name of your holy servant Jesus. So they were praying two things. Lord, take hold of their threats. And now grant us boldness, and that we will speak with confidence. And extend your hand so we will see healing, signs, and wonders. Two things to pray, boldness and signs and wonders and they got their answer how did god answer their prayer and when they had prayed the place where they were gathered together was shaking and they were all filled with the holy spirit and began to speak the word of god with boldness the answer for boldness the answer for power 
is the Holy Spirit. And what we see here is that they have already received the Holy Spirit, but now they will fill again. But it was from inside, it came out as of and filling them out. It's not like we need to be baptized or receive the Holy Spirit many times. When we have Him, we have Him. But the Bible makes it clear we need to continue walking in that fullness of filling of the Holy Spirit. Don't get drunk with wine, but be full of the Spirit is a command we read in Ephesians 5. And next time, in the next lesson, I'm going to look at how you receive the Holy Spirit, but we're also going to look at how you continue walking in the Spirit and being filled with the Spirit. So, but here we saw how they came and they prayed. They did not pray, oh God, hide us here, hide us for those people, God, see their threats, God. And, and, and no, they, they prayed a bold prayer. And they prayed and the Holy Spirit came and filled them up. We need to receive the same Spirit. We need to be baptized with the Spirit. And we need to continue being full of the Spirit. Jesus had not left us alone. He has sent us a helper. And when the Holy Spirit came, come over us, He's a free gift. He's a free gift to us. We will receive power to become His martyr his witness and this is what we saw here in john and peter it was what we saw here in the early disciples we saw that power and we see that we see that life and it continues in x5 and and it continues x6 in x5 we just read this word they, they say this about the holy spirit and we are witness of these things and so is the holy spirit whom God have given to those who obey him. So they said, we are witness of those things. And so is the Holy Spirit. They really recognize the Holy Spirit in their life. They recognize the Holy Spirit as being part of their life, of their church. <laughs> and we're going to look more of that. And you're going to see things they were saying about the Holy Spirit you will never see today. You never see today, hey, we, we are witness of those things and, and so are the Holy Spirit. You, you often don't hear talk like that today. But the Holy Spirit was a big part of their church. When they were picking, when they should choose people for ministry, as they did in uh, Acts 6. Acts 6, what happened in Acts 6 was the numbers of the disciples grew a lot. And there was more and more things they need to take care of with this daily serving of food and the apostles at that time was actually involved in that they were serving food to all the people who came together but then we read that that they felt that that was wrong they need to focus on the word and prayers instead so they needed to find somebody who could take over the practical job of serving food and we read that in Acts 6 4 we read here but we will give ourselves continue to prayer and to the ministry of the word. So they wanted to focus on that. And that saying pleased the whole multitude. And they then chose other people to help practical. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit and Philip and some other people here. So here we read that they were in a place in the church where they needed somebody to help to serve food so the apostle could focus on the word and the spirit in a word and prayer. What, what, the, what were they looking for in those people that should serve food? They were looking not for those people who was the best cook, not for those people who had the biggest administrating gift. They were looking for people who was full with the spirit we read here full of the holy spirit that was what they were looking for people who are full of the spirit the same should happen today if you have a church and you need people to come in and take position in the church and help with things what do we look at today we look at everything else oh are they good do they have a good administrating gift are they good at, at, 
at uh, are the very outward person, very nice person, very charismatic person? Are they, uh, like, what about the spirit in them? Are they full of the spirit or are they not full of the spirit? And, and so that was what they went for. And we read here, and Stephen, verse 6, and, uh, verse 8, and Stephen, full of faith and power. We read power again, power to be a witness, power to perform miracles. Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. We don't read what those wonders and miracles was in Stephen's life, but he did it. Why? Because this is signs that follow people who are full of the Spirit. We saw it in Jesus' life. When he was full of the Spirit, he walked in the power of the Spirit. And we, if we are full of the Spirit, we should also walk in the power of the Spirit. And there should be signs and wonders amongst us. And we also read beside the signs and wonders, we read here that, in, and you can read in, in um, Acts 6, that he spoke the word with boldness, like Peter. Like John, he spoke the word with boldness. And we read verse 10. And they were not able to withstand the wisdom of the spirit which he spoke. So here we have Stephen. Stephen was a, a man who was taken up for the job, taken out for the job to serve food. He was not a preacher. He was not a teacher. He was not an apostle. He was not an evangelist. He was not a, a prophet. He was a man full of the Spirit. <laughs> and everyone who's full of the Spirit thinks is happening. Signs and wonders is happening. A man who's full of the Spirit will also speak with wisdom. And by the Spirit. He spoke with wisdom by the Spirit. And they again could not withstand the wisdom he spoke with. Exactly as we read before, with, read before with, with, with Peter. This is what the Spirit is doing. And then you read about how Stephen, he was preaching. You can read that in chapter 7. Beautiful, beautiful sermon. Here you read how he lay up the history from Abraham over to Jacob, from Jacob to Joseph, from Joseph to Moses and up to Solomon. And he just lay out church history. <laughs> he lay out church history like a man. You are just like, where do he get that wisdom from? He was an uneducated man, unschooled man, like we read with Peter. Peter was a fisherman. I don't know what Stephen was, but I know one thing he was. He was full of the Spirit. And here he spoke with wisdom. And then not only he spoke with wisdom, but uh, he got the power to become a martyr. Because he became the first martyr we read about. And we read here in uh, chapter 7, 54, and when they heard those things, they were caught to the heart. And they glanced with their teeth. He, Stephen, being full of the Spirit. That is the same. We don't see those words in anyone before, in any disciples before the cross. But this is what we see after the cross. Full of the Spirit. He looked steadfast up to heaven. And he saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on his right hand. And he said, Behold, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. <laughs> they have just uh, been angry at him. They were ready to stone him. When they heard that, they cried out with loud voice. And they stopped their ear and they run upon him with one accord and they cast him out of the city and they stoned him and we got the first martyr when the holy spirit come upon you jesus said you shall receive power to become his martyr and there was what stephen experienced the holy spirit came upon him he was full of the holy spirit he saw signs and wonders he spoke with wisdom and he became a martyr for Christ. Here we saw Stephen. Stephen, he was a man serving at the tables. 
like Philip. We are going to look at Philip in the next chapter. But we often say Philip, uh, Philip the evangelist. We call him the evangelist. But Philip was not an evangelist. He was not taken out for the job. Maybe he became an evangelist, but he was not taken out for the job to go to Samaria and see revival. Philip, like Stephen, was a man full of the Spirit who was being chosen to serve food to the people. Plates of food. Get our food. Bring it out to the people. But then persecution happened. We read in the beginning of Acts 8 that Saul at that time, he went against the church and went from house to house and put people into jail. And then everyone was scattered abroad and they then start to preach. And then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed unto them the Christ. And the multitude gave heed with one accord upon the things when that was spoken by Philip, when they heard and saw the signs which he did. And we continue, for many of those with unclean spirit, they came out crying out with loud voice, and many lame was healed and so on, and there was much joy in the city. This was not Philip the evangelist. This was Philip the full of the Holy Spirit. That was the guy who was serving at the tables. But persecution happened. And because of persecution, he went to Samaria. And what happened? What did he see? He saw the same signs and wonders of Stephen. But it was not only Samaria Philip saw those great things. The Holy Spirit then led him and he came out to the to eunuch and the Holy Spirit spoke to him and, and he saw signs and wonders. Let me ask you a question. We have just gone, looked a little at the first eight chapters in the book of Acts. We see a totally transformed Peter. We see a Peter with boldness, ready to become a martyr, and he became a martyr later. We see a guy like Stephen, who was a guy serving at the table, but spoke with boldness and became a martyr because he had received the power of the Holy Spirit to become a martyr. We saw Philip, guy serving at the table, saw signs and wonders. We saw people spoke with boldness, signs and wonders. We saw they spoke with a wisdom from the Spirit. Can, let me ask you a question. If people today don't see any of these things, why do we believe they have the Holy Spirit in them? If Jesus said, when the Holy Spirit come over you, you shall receive power. If people don't have that power, why do you think they have the Holy Spirit? If people don't have the power to be a martyr, to confess Christ with boldness, why do you think they have the Holy Spirit? Or why do you, do you think they are full of the Spirit? And I'm going to talk about receiving the Spirit and continue full of the Spirit. But when you receive the Spirit, you should be full of the Spirit in that moment. But you need to continue that. I just want to say when I study the book of Acts and study the early church and, and look at how the Holy Spirit was working, the book of the Holy Spirit, the acts of the Holy Spirit, and we believe Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The only conclusion I can come with is that many people today who think they have the Holy Spirit, who talk like they have the Holy Spirit, that they don't have the Holy Spirit. Why? Because everything that is following is missing. <laughs> if you cannot confess Jesus from your neighbors, if you cannot confess Jesus on your school, if, if your workplace don't know you are Christian, how have you received power to be a witness you haven't if you don't see any signs of what if you see nothing is is following then there is a big chance you don't have the holy spirit because this is what the world is saying and we don't want to build on our tradition we don't want to be deceived and we need to examine ourselves to see if christ is in us and when i say christ in is is in us is the holy spirit now the spirit of christ who is in us we can know a tree by the fruit. This fruit need to be in our life. I'm just saying it need to be. 
But I think it's good news because if you come to that point and like, oh, I don't have any of it, that's good. You have maybe been deceived, but then receive the spirit. See the transformation in your life ah, and continue to live in it. I get challenged by this teaching. I want to be fu- f- live in the fullness of the Holy Spirit so much more than I've done until now. But I have seen it. <laughs> Like when, when I went out of school, some of you know my story. I have a speaking mistake. My name is Tom Sønnergaard. When I was younger, it was Gorben Gønnergaard. I could not pronounce my own name. I have no self-confidence. I couldn't stand in front of people. I couldn't speak loud. I, I had never read a book in my whole life when I left school. I couldn't read. I couldn't write. I had a speaking mistake. But then the Holy Spirit came. Hallelujah. And I still remember when the Holy Spirit came into me. It was like a light came into my body and I fell to the floor. And I was like, whoa. And I remember the first thing that happened when I stepped out of that church. A word came to me. I did not know it was the Bible. But the word came, nothing is impossible. I have grown up with everything is impossible. I cannot read. I cannot write. I cannot speak in front of people. I don't know what to do in my life. Everything is impossible. But now, nothing is impossible. I felt a power inside of me. I felt this. And since that day, I've been speaking bold in front of people. I've been on national TV, in Denmark Live TV, so many live programs in front of TV, speak with boldness and take crosses of people and pray for the sake through the TV. I've written seven, eight, eight books now, translated to a lot of languages. I am an uneducated, unlearned man. I've never been in seminary, but I've been with Christ. I have the Spirit of God inside of me. I have a helper that's called the Holy Spirit who are making the Word alive in my life, who are revealing truth to me. And there is a big difference between people who have been in seminary who have a head knowledge and then people who have been with Christ and who are full of the Spirit and walk in boldness and see signs and wonders following. We cast our demon, we see signs and wonder, we have testimonies, beautiful. See our movie, Last Revelation. I have not seen it, it's here at Last Revelation, the life, Last Revelation, the beginning. And, and here you see the power of God we have seen. But I know there's more, I'm getting challenged by this. I know there's even more for me. But how do I get that more? Own strength? No. By the Holy Spirit. By continue being full of the Spirit, continue being with Him. So uh, I want to testify that what we read here, I can testify by my own life with what I've seen until now, knowing there's more. This is the truth. And when the Holy Spirit comes over people, that should happen transformation. Not just people standing and speaking in tongues. I love tongues. I love people who receive tongues. But there's so much more than tongues here. You can know a tree by the fruit. And there's more fruit than this. We also read about the fruit of the Spirit. We read in Galatians 5. I also want to say that. We read here, 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And they that are of Jesus Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and is lost. If we live by the Spirit, by the Spirit let us also walk. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Is that what is coming out of your life? Joy. When people see you, they, they, do they see uh, somebody who's joyful? Peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness. Self-control. This is fruit. You can know a tree by its fruit. And this fruit should also follow. The love we read about last time when we looked at Jesus. The Abba crying out, Abba, Father. The, the, the love also where we are able to love the poor and love people. And the love that has been poured out in our heart by the Holy Spirit. But I see deception. And as the Bible says here in 2 Corinthians 13, 5, 
Examine yourself to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourself. How do we test ourselves? Out of the church traditions? No, out of this. Test yourself. Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you? Test yourself. Do you not realize that the Spirit of Christ is in you? Test yourself. Do you not realize that the Holy Spirit is in you? Unless, of course, you fail the test. Test yourself. That is a command. Is Christ in you by His Spirit? Is the Holy Spirit in you, the Spirit of Christ in you? How do we know that? Look at the fruit. Look at the fruit. Look at the fruit. We have just gone through Book of Acts. We have just read here the fruit of the Spirit. If that is not in you, if that is not a testimony in your life, there is a big chance that Christ is not in you. I want to say that, of course, listen to next time because we need to continue bearing fruit and we need to grow up. And that fruit, a transformation, the power is coming right away, but it takes time for it to manifest to our lives. So if you just received the Holy Spirit yesterday, relax, let, let the Holy Spirit work in you. But if you should have received the Holy Spirit 30 years ago, and you don't see this in your life. I'm just saying there is something wrong. We need to test ourselves to make sure that we don't fail that test. That the Christ is in us. And then we need to look at the, the, the deception. Look at the fruit. Matthew 7. I need to bring that up. Matthew 7. Beware of false prophets and i would actually say beware of false christians there's a lot of false christians not only false prophets beware of false evangelists false teachers false pastors false leaders beware of everything that's false which come to you in sheep clothing but inwardly they are reverend wolf so there is people who come to us in sheep clothing but inwardly they are not sheep. They look sheep, they even bah like sheep, but they're not sheep. How can you know a fruit of a person? Not on a platform, not through a YouTube video, but through their life. What you out there think about me to my YouTube videos, it, it don't matter so much. What really matters is what my wife thinks about me. What really matters is what my daughters, what my son what my daughter-in-law think about me what really matters is what do my best friends what those people around me those people who walk up of me think about me do they see the holy spirit in me do they see the love the joy the peace do they see the fruit of the spirit do they see the power of the spirit do they see the truth do, what do they see in me that is what matters because it's so easy to deceive others if you want to. This is what we read here. By their fruit you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes of thorn bushes or figs or thistles? Likewise, every good tree bear good fruit, but a bad tree bear bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down or will be cut down and thrown into the fire. You can know them by their fruit. Not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, to me, would enter into the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who do the will of the Father who is in heaven. Many with that day say, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Or did we not drive out demons in your name? And did we not perform many miracles? Then I would tell you plainly, I never knew you. On the word, I never have a really close fellowship with that you. That was the word. Away from me, you evildoers or you who do lawlessness. This is very serious. I What I see here is that when you receive the Holy Spirit, you receive power. Power, power to perform miracles. But the fruit of the Spirit takes time. And the, that transformation also needs to take care if you, to happen in your life. But what I sadly see is that many people receive that power and walking power and walking faith. 
But then they don't let the Holy Spirit really transform their life. And after a short time, they start to walk in the flesh again. And go down the wrong road. And yes, there will be a price. And yes, God is going to judge them. And yes, he will say away from me, you who commit lawlessness. But unto that time, they can actually work in signs and wonders. Judas betrayed Jesus, but he was sent out and did miracles like the rest there when he was given, not the Holy Spirit, but the power at that time. What I see today is, we, I see ministries all over America, all over the world also, but especially America. I know a minister here in America who is preaching with boldness who's healing the sick, who's casting out demons. But he had just left his wife. Short time ago, he, this is the second wife he's leaving. He have had civil affairs, because I know the church you're torn out of. He have had civil affairs. And he just left his wife and two kids with another affair he had with a young girl. And now he's married with her, the third marriage. He is living in sexual sin. He's living in idolatry. But he is performing miracles right now. He sees signs and wonders right now. He see it. He get a big follower and a big scar, scar who are following him. If you see the YouTube video shows, if you hear the miracles, you say, whoa, look at him. He have the fruit of the Holy Spirit in him. And Yahweh would say, yes, but it needs to go together with the rest. It needs to go together with what we see. The fruit of the Spirit is in Galatians. Love, joy, peace. He is not walking in the true love. He don't love his wife. He's walking not in love. He's walking in lust. There is a big difference between walking in love and walking in lust. He has been fallen. He's lost leaving his wife and find a non, not a girl and be with him, her, sorry. And just because he's married, don't justify it. He's living in sin. And it's hard to see. And many people have been deceived by it. What I believe there, and I'm talking about it next time, next time again, that you can receive the Holy Spirit and you can walk in the power of the Spirit. But there is also a place where you can grieve the, grieve the Holy Spirit and where the Holy Spirit will leave you. And I believe in his life in a few years, I've seen that with other ministers. He will end up going down the wrong road and uh, the Holy Spirit will leave him completely if there is not having true repentance before. When we talk about the Bible, the, one of the reasons I also bring this up is that when we read about the Holy Spirit in people's life, or the Holy Spirit in the Bible, we all know people. We know people, yeah, they speak in tongues. They have the Spirit, but I don't see the love in their life. He do miracles, I don't see the power there. But they, they have the Holy Spirit, but... But they don't see healings, but, but I see some fruit in their life, but love and peace and joy, but there's no power, there's no miracles, but they must have the Holy Spirit. There is so many people around us, and you can get really, really confused, because there is a guy like that guy I know who's doing videos and miracles and healings and preaching boldness, but the fruit is not there. The fruit of the Spirit, he's living in sin. And, and I'm really afraid for him that he, he's getting lost. He will hear these words if he don't repent. You cannot just leave your wife. You can think everything is good because you see signs and wonders. But that is not the si that's everything you need. You need the fruit of the Spirit also. He's lost. But then we see other people who really have the joy, the peace, the lo love, the long-suffering, the kindness, the goodness, the faithfulness, and all of that. But don't have any miracles. And sometimes we feel like, what to choose and pick? I, I, I want the miracles, but I want the life. I don't want his bed. I, I want. Let's stop comparing the Bible with everyone else around us. Take the Word of God for what the Word of God is. And take responsibility for your life. No matter if other people have gone wrong. 
don't go wrong. No matter how much deception you see around you. And I've seen it. I've seen people fall there, pride, people fall there, money, people fall there. I've seen a lot of deception around me. I have one responsibility, that is my life. And what other people out there say is not the first important, it's what my family and people say around me. Those people who see the truth. And what God is saying, that is what is important. So I just want to say, don't get deceived. Like if we read in John, 1 John, I just see it here, 1 John 3. Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. The one who do what is right is righteous, just as he's righteous. The one who does what is sinful is of the devil, because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the work of the devil. No one who is born by God will continue to sin. Because God's seeds remain in him. They cannot go on sinning because they've been born by God. This is how, this is how you know who the children of God is and who the children of the devil is. Anyone who did not do what is right is not the children of God, nor is the one who do not love their brother or sister. We need to have the fullness of the Bible. There is signs and wonder that should follow, but this should also follow a holy life. And that guy I know and other people who are living in willfully sin, he cannot continue in willfully sin because the seed of God is in him. If he continue out of this road, the seed of God, the Holy Spirit will disappear. I guarantee you that. And we have seen that before. We have seen so many people who start strong by the Spirit, but end up without no life, without no joy, peace, no spirit in them. Why? Because they have grieved the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to talk about that later because all sin against the Son of God will be forgiven, but not all sin against the Holy Spirit. We can grieve the Holy Spirit. We can sin against the Holy Spirit. And there's a whole new sermon there I'm going to come in with later, a whole new teaching. But we need all of it. So I just want to say, it. you focus on you. Examine yourself to see whether you, whether you are in the faith. Test yourself. Is Christ in you? Is the Holy Spirit in you? Yeah, but, but they, don't look at him. Yeah, but he, don't look at him. Yeah, but my church tradition, don't look at my church. Yeah, but I've had people around me say, don't look at him. Look at the Bible. Look at what the word is saying. And then let's see ourselves in this. The Bible is a mirror. We are being transformed by what we see from glory to glory. We are being transformed by what we see. If we are willful, if we are not a forgetful hearers, but a doer of the world, we are being transformed by what we see. When you read the book of Acts, when you read about Philip, when you read about Stephen, when you read about Peter and John, do you see yourself there? Maybe not on that level, but do you... Do that become a more and more reality in your life? Or do you become less and less reality in your life? This is what it is. I often said, we don't look exactly like Christ now, but we should look more like Christ now than we did last year. But let, let's continue. So we read the Holy Spirit is a big, big part of the early church. We have looked at chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 in book of Acts. And we read words like we wrote, read in 5.32. We and the Holy Spirit are witness of those things. Or we are witness of those things and so is the Holy Spirit. We read things like this. But if we got, go, continue through the book of Acts, we will continue seeing many amazing things. I'll just read three verses that just shows the Holy Spirit in the early church. Book of Acts 15, verse 28. For it seems good to the Holy Spirit and to us. There was, they had a time where there was things they need to take care of. What is right was for the Jews and Gentiles and, and what rules to set up. And then they came together and they seek God and they came and laid out in front of people. And then they said this, it seems good to the Holy Spirit and to us. Where do you, where, where do you hear talk like that today? Try to imagine coming into a church and they have decided to... Buy something, or change something, or 
do a new conference, a new meetings, or start a Bible school. The leadership come together and they talk with the church and they say, yes, the Holy Spirit and us, we have come to this agreement or come to this place that this is what we are going to do. The Holy Spirit and us. It seems good to, not us just, it seems good to the Holy Spirit and us. That was how big a part the Holy Spirit was in the early church. Next chapter, 16 verse 6, we read things like this. Being forbidden of the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. They went other places. So they were forbidden. It seems good to the Holy Spirit and us. Forbidden by the Holy Spirit. In Acts 20, 22, Behold, I am bound in the Spirit unto Jerusalem. So we read here in three verses that it seems good to the Holy Spirit and us. Forbidden by the Holy Spirit. Bound of the Holy Spirit. Where do we hear talk like that today? And I just want to say, the more I study the Bible, <laughs> the more I study the early church, the more I see the deception today. The mainstream church is heretic, what they're preaching. It's, a, it's like, yeah, when, when you got baptized as a baby, you all had the Holy Spirit. When you believe, you all had the Holy Spirit. And people can live a life like 30, 40, 50 years without any fruit of the Spirit or, or without a lot of flesh, little fruit, <laughs> without no power, without no boldness, without no miracles, without nothing. Yeah, yeah, but they have the Holy Spirit. Why? Because they prayed the sinner's prayer. And you got sealed with the Holy Spirit until the day you die. No fruit. You can know a tree by the fruit. The deception is so big, and that's why I'm doing this series called Fighting for the True Gospel. We need the true gospel. And if you believe what the mainstream church believe, I would say like this, sorry, you are deceived. I'm just honest. We, there is a remnant today who have the Holy Spirit who are living this life. If you don't see that, there's nothing wrong with the Bible, there's something wrong with you. What is the answer? Get the Holy Spirit. Being filled of the Spirit. And this is what I'm going to talk about next time. Next time I'm going to look at how do you receive the Holy Spirit. But not only how do you receive the Holy Spirit, how do you continue being full of the Spirit? What should you do to continue being full of the Spirit? And that is also important. I'm going to talk about that next time. And be ready for, for the teaching next time. Again, don't take my word on it. Until next time, maybe take the book of Acts. Just the first eight, eight chapter. Read it yourself. And then pray God and say, God, do I have the Spirit in me? If not, give me the Spirit. Start to pray. Start to seek. Receive the Holy Spirit. Don't give up before you have the Holy Spirit. And you have the Holy Spirit, but, but are not really being continuing the fullness. Pray. Speaking tongues, let the Spirit fill you up again. Start to walk in it. This is the normal Christian life. So God bless you. I hope this teaching has helped you. If you haven't seen all the other teachings in the series, also go back and see them from the beginning. And I look so much forward to next time when I'm going to talk about how you receive the Holy Spirit and how you are filled with the Holy Spirit. Let me end up just praying for you right now. God, I pray for people out there who have been convicted through this teaching. Pray that you come with your spirit over them right now, God. God, pray that you come and fill them up, God. God, come with the Holy Spirit for the first time. Baptize them in the Holy Spirit, God. Come with your spirit over them right now in the name of Jesus, God. And I pray for those, God, who have the spirit but have not been continuing the fullness, God. Come and fill them up right now, God. Stir the spirit up in them, God. God, come with your Holy Spirit over them. Come with your Holy Spirit over all of us, God. Remove all deception and lies from our church and our tradition and help us to see that this is the truth, God. God, help us to walk in this boldness. Help us to be your martyr, God. God, we will walk in boldness. We will be ready to die, Jesus, for your name's sake. Why? Because you are giving us the Spirit who give us power to become your martyr. And we want to walk in this wisdom. We want to walk in this boldness. We want to walk in the signs and wonders and miracles, Jesus. You are forever the same. We ask forgiveness for the deception we have been living in. Ask forgiveness that we have been happy 
and thankful with something that is much more less than what you have for us. Jesus, we want everything you have for us. Come with your Holy Spirit, God. Work in my life. Work in everyone who's seen this video, God. Continue working in them, God. Come with your Holy Spirit, God. Shill up out there, get scared, they're working them, God. Fill them up, God. Fill them up, God. Fill them up in the name of Jesus. I will stop now and you can just continue praying and seek God. God bless you. Bye-bye.